Megan, spring is one of our family's busiest seasons with tons of time on the go. There are so many places to be and details to remember. And the last thing I need is the constant irritation of uncomfortable shoes. So today we're talking about the Vionic Vitals collection from our longtime sponsor, Vionic Shoes. These are the best essential shoe styles for everyday wear this season. So Katie on our team is getting ready for warmer weather in Chicagoland with a pair of Vionic's Bella Toe Post sandals. These are Vionic's best-selling flip-flop style, and they have a cute little bow on them. They come in nine great colors, but Katie chose a versatile black patent leather. They're super supportive for her high instep, and they even come in wide sizes, which is a great option. Yeah, the styles in the Vionic Vitals collection are classics that don't really go out of fashion, and because they're such great quality, they're going to last as well, even with daily wear, which mine definitely get. And I love that Vionic offers a 30-day guarantee. Wear them, love them, or return them for a full refund within 30 days. But I have a feeling after those 30 days, our listeners will love their Vionic shoes so much they'll be ready to order another pair. Use code themomhour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at Vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one-time use only. Vionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us, and we're the hosts of The Mom Hour. On this show, we're joined by a team of unique mom voices from across the country and in different stages of motherhood to bring you tips, ideas, and encouragement, and to help you feel a little less alone. We all know that motherhood is a lot easier when real moms share honest truths and remind each other that it's all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to The Mom Hour. Everybody and welcome to the Mom Hour. I am Sarah Powers, and I have Megan Francis here. Hey, Megan. Hey, Sarah. Well, happy Friday. We're popping into your feed unannounced, but we like to do that every now and again. Um, and we're here to share that you are about to get um, a classic from the archives. You're going to hear us do a Would You Rather game from back in 2018. <laughs> Megan, do you have a memory of recording this? We were together in person. I sort of do. Um... I mean, we were in the bed and not in the closet, right? Wasn't there one movie we did like in a closet? <laughs> Maybe. I remember us. We were sitting side by side in a bed in my parents' house in Santa Barbara in and their guest room. cracking up. I remember that. Yeah. Yes. And I think yes. it was, uh, we were recording a lot. We had been together in person. And I think the idea to do a would you rather was, was rather last minute. Um, but there's nothing more fun than a little would you rather. And and I picked this one to replay today because this week we are celebrating our nine year uh, podcast anniversary. And um, so we want to do something a little fun and celebratory. So we're going to be back with a new episode on Tuesday um, to celebrate that as well. But in the meantime, you all get this lovely bonus. Megan, there was a would you rather question in here that sometimes I still think about and laugh um, about. Was it one that you asked me or one that no, I asked you, you came up with it and it involves okay. triplets and I still okay. think about it sometimes. So <laughs> listeners, keep your ears open for that it's one. It's so fun to think of us back in like 2018, like how innocent we were, you know, oh, like, yeah. would you rather have a global pandemic or not? That should have been the right. question. Right. You know? Oh my gosh, it's so true. <laughs> How little we knew. Or triplets. How about that? Yeah, or triplets. (laughs) Well, we're so thankful for everybody who comes and listens to us and is part of this community. And truly, there would not be a podcast if you weren't out there listening and supporting us and telling us you like our silly episodes and our serious episodes and all of that. So um, happy anniversary week to us. Enjoy this throwback episode, everyone, and have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Hey guys, and welcome to the Mom Hour. I'm Sarah Powers, and I'm here in person with Megan Francis. Hey, Megan. So exciting. So if you are new around here, you may not know we don't get to record in person together very often. And when we do, it's very exciting. Usually means one of us has traveled. And it almost always means we're in a bed. Yes. Oddly (laughs) enough. Lots of good acoustics. Yeah. Um, We are together in my hometown of Santa Barbara. It is 25 degrees hotter than it usually is. It's a little, us... it's a little uh, steamy in here, I have to say. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is one of our More Than Mom episodes. So if you are brand new, welcome. But also, this is a little bit different. Um, a couple of Sundays a month, we take a topic outside of motherhood and parenting, usually pretty fluffy and funny. And we have a good old-fashioned girlfriend chat about something that's not super instructive, but we hope you enjoy the ride. I'm really excited about this one because we were in our in the car last night in an Uber or a Lyft on our way out to dinner and we were trying to think of what we're going to talk about 
on the show today because with the more than moms we keep it really casual and i usually come up with the topic like five minutes before we record and i thought it would be really fun to play a game of would you rather love it because it's great conversation and i think we'll learn a lot about each other and we'll have plenty to say I want to go first. Okay. I got to find my would you rathers here. I did them in a separate computer. Guys, we we are podcasting in a bed and there are three computers, two phones, two mics, cords. A lovely bed, I will say, in Sarah's parents' house in Santa Barbara. It is gorgeous. We decided if we could work from this home in these environment all the time, well, you know, we'd rule the world. I podca- We would. And I podcast in bed at home, Yeah, but I don't have a lovely linen... Um, headboard headboard I think I need one it, it feels very comfortable and I feel like my sound is better than usual so yeah 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 there's also a plethora of throw pillows there is yes abundant many <laughs> pillows acoustically we're in the game here um okay so my first would you rather is motherhood related okay kind of back to the the days the heydays so would you rather navigate a level five public tantrum in public like the kind like like your child is on the dirty Sirens floor going off yeah okay. fists tears screaming like you are murdering them like that kind of the most embarrassing public yep. tantrum okay or deal with the same level of diaper blowout when you're like short on wipes and don't have a change of clothes okay i think i would go with the diaper i would rather go with the diaper blowout because um, I am cool in situations like that. Uh-huh. I don't get easily rattled by mess or gross. Right. I'm just, and I would figure out some solution. Like you, I know, we know from your um, mom fail episode that you once, or I guess it was John who Jerry rigged a diaper, yes, a diaper yes. out of like uh, paper towels and Meyer bags and stuff. <laughs> um, but I think that I would figure something out. Like right. I would be resourceful in the moment. I wouldn't panic. Um, and I would just either that or I would just go home. So it right. wouldn't be like the end of the world. But I feel like for the um, the public tantrum, that would like target and trigger all of my worst mom triggers and insecurities. Yeah. And then I wouldn't know what to do. And I'd be sweating yeah. and like panicking and I would feel super uncomfortable. And that sounds like it's actually making me sweat right okay. now. So what about you? I would do the opposite. Okay. And you know, (laughs) both of us have to kind of acknowledge that like, we've now done both of those things enough now that we know they're not the end of the world. So we're sort of having to imagine like back in those days, would we rather like, what would we have rathered? Um, So I would take the tantrum because I find myself more calm and cool with public parenting and public tantrums. They're not that I enjoy them. Right. But the, the diaper blowout, especially if, um, cause for me, a trigger is feeling like, I was unprepared or I should have thought of something because I usually oh, am so prepared and I yeah. usually do have the diaper bag packed. And so it's a real like, I mean, shame trigger is a strong phrase. It's not like that, but it's like, it's like I'm kicking myself. I'm like, yeah. you should have had a plastic bag or a change so that's of clothes. all you'd be able to think about. Yes. I'd be really be mad. So I would much. be, no, I'd be, you know, the mess is clean upable, right. but it's more of like, it's a very, yeah, I'm very hard on myself with that kind of stuff. And for some reason with the public tantrums, yeah, I mean, they can be embarrassing. They're not right. fun. But I think I'd rather do that than the blowout. This is a very interesting microcosm of both of our mm-hmm. personalities and how they differ. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think that's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not surprised. Okay. So my first one is also yep. parenting related. Okay. I don't, I honestly have no idea if we're going to agree on this one or disagree. Okay. So I'm going to go. Would you rather have triplets or three kids less than a year apart each? Oh my God. Gosh, that's <laughs> such a good question. I didn't even <laughs> think of like asking one like that. Okay. Less than a year apart. Each. Yeah. Like so Irish, the, twipl- or tri- yeah, Irish triplets. Irish basically. triplets. So like 11 months apart, 10 to 11 months apart. Um, I think I'm going to say the Irish triplets. Okay. It would be hard as sin. Hard yes. as all get out. Um, but I am a kind of like process oriented, compartmentalized mm. person. So I feel like it would just suit my ability to be like, okay, now I'm doing this. Now I'm doing this. Now I'm doing this. And then I'm going to do it again and again. And then, yeah. yeah. And, and, um, I think the triplets would be so hard and overwhelming. They would be so hard. This would all be so hard. Okay. I mean, it would all be, yeah. I'm going to go the opposite. Okay. I would do the triplets. Um, and both would I be love this question really, so really hard. But I think for me, I am more of like a big project. Like I yes. feel like I can do anything once yes. or for a short period you are, of time. You like strap on your cape and you go. Yes. And I think yeah. I could just be like, okay, I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to power through. And 
it would be super super hard during certain parts but it's yeah. like you'd kind of get through all the hard stuff yeah. at once and then you might have some respite yeah and and i feel like i would see that light at the end of the tunnel mm-hmm. sooner whereas if if I were my say yeah. oldest was three and I had just had a baby, yeah. well, it wouldn't even be three, yeah. it's like two and some change. And I had just had a newborn. I would feel like I'd be stuck in this mayhem yeah. for years and years. And also I think I would, you know how you start to forget about the phase that you're not in. Yeah. Yeah. I would feel like I was constantly straddling constantly different phases relearning. Yep. and relearning and um, like having a newborn and a toddler at the same time yeah. sounds like, I mean, it just sounds How about, really, we have really hard. Many listeners who don't, I don't know. Okay. If you are a listener and you have either Irish triplets or triplets, yes, please t- let us know. Let us know. Which one? <laughs> yeah. We'll have like, we'll put you on like a, like a virtual debate. Team. Yes. Um, but actually we do have a lot of listeners who have twins and a singleton okay. very closely spaced. Okay. So, and I know a few people in real life like this too, where there's a less than two year gap between twins and another so it would be similar i mean it would be kind of like the worst of both worlds really it is like (laughs) so i don't have anything to say about that except i know you're listening actually kelsey who works with us um i think they're about two years apart exactly yeah and they're three the twins are three and then five now so that's like okay like getting a little bit of a breather um but like can you imagine having two crawling nine month olds and then like a two and a half year old well i just did the math in my head (laughs) And if you truly had Irish triplets, one would be a newborn, one would be 11 months old, and the other one wouldn't even be two. This is a travesty. <laughs> this is like, I mean, just think about that. It's like, not a travesty. 11 months old are that going love, into that, yeah. that like stage that's really, really hard. Yes. And then the older one it's would be like one. firmly in that stage. It's really, really hard. Yeah. And then you have a newborn. At one point, you'd have two one-year-olds. Like just, a, like a 13 month old. I can't with a, this. If this is your I, life, I'm so sorry that we're like, seeming to tear it apart you're really blessed have, i mean don't yes. get us wrong you're so blessed but and it's and it's and you're an amazing person so please tell us how you're surviving i want to know oh my gosh that question made me so happy sarah our sponsor vionic is back today with their vionic vitals collection these shoes are the most essential styles for everyday wear to get us ready for spring which will be here before we know it we've already talked about my uptown loafers and will a slip on flat and your chardonnay heeled sandal but this collection also includes the walk 23 classic sneaker that is that unapologetic dad sneaker style that's so popular right now and i was just thinking having all four styles would basically be like having a spring capsule wardrobe for your feet oh my gosh that is actually such a genius idea megan i love where you're going with this you know high quality shoes are such a classy way to elevate your wardrobe And the styles in the Vionic Vitals collection really can be worn in your everyday mom life, whether you're running errands or dressing up for an occasion. Yeah. And let's talk about the comfort factor, Sarah. Vionic actually got started by revolutionizing medical orthotics. Today, they continue to use that science to make cute and comfortable shoes that can keep up with our active lifestyles. Use code THEMOMHOUR15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's one-time use only. Vionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. This episode is sponsored by Olive in June. And Sarah, I am just so grateful that I have mastered the art of doing my nails at home. When I look down at my cute manicure, I feel a little more pulled together, no matter how crazy life is at the moment. Thankfully, Olive in June's Manny system makes it so easy and affordable to make Manny time a regular part of my weekly routine. Well, I know the feeling, Megan, and I think it's so fun that with Olive and June, you get to customize your Manny system with your choice of six polishes, plus their top coat is included. So Katie on our team says that she has lately been layering some of their iridescent colors over their gel-like polishes, and the final result looks super shimmery and pretty. I might have to try that this spring. Yeah, and Olive and June press-ons are another cool option. They look so real, and I think it would be a great way to test out another nail shape. A long almond shape is popular right now, and I'm kind of curious what that would look like on me. Okay, well, keep me posted on that one. Listeners, visit oliveandjune.com slash the mom hour for 20% off your first Manny system. That's O-L-I-V-E-A-N-D-J-U-N-E dot com slash T-H-E-M-O-M-H-O-U-R for 20% off your first Manny system. Okay, should I do another one? (laughs) Yeah, do another one. All right. Okay, so would you rather, this is totally different and kind of short, Okay, would you rather give up caffeine or alcohol for one year? I that put was t- my question. I mean, we knew we'd have. But Did okay, you put a one-year timeline I felt on like it? this one was mean, actually. When I put it, I was kind of <laughs> snickering to myself. Mine was more specific, though. Okay. Mine was give up coffee or wine for okay. you. 
which is a little different. Yeah. I'm saying all caffeine and all, or all alcohol for one year. Okay. We can answer both. We can just do them yeah. quickly in tandem. So I honestly think that I would probably give up the caffeine um, because I, and because I thought about this question because I wrote yeah. it for you, because I love beverages, but like to me, the, the effect of the caffeine isn't really the point right. of the beverage. Like I, and I could just as easily have an herbal tea yeah. or if I wasn't having, you know, tea or coffee, I could have hot chocolate yeah. and be totally fine yeah. with that. But wine isn't really replaceable. Yeah. You can't replace it with something. I don't yeah. care about booze, like whatever. Yeah. I like a beer every now and then. That's fine. But like to me, the flavor of a wine isn't something I could swap, swap out with something else. Yep. It, and everything about it, the, the um, temperature. Yeah that it's served at the, the experience, the, experience yeah. the flavor. Like I just wouldn't get that from anything else. So yeah. Yeah. And I would say the same and I, I've actually cut my coffee consumption down quite a bit anyway. And I'm, I'm now I sleep through the night. It would be a different question if that caffeine yeah. was like super essential. Like the coffee used to be so essential and the, I barely had time to enjoy the wine. Yeah. Now my life is a little different. Right. So I would definitely give up coffee before and I, wine. You know, I'm a tea drinker and I love my morning tea. Um, but I will sometimes have two or three cups that I'll make with the same tea bag. And by the time yeah. you get to like yeah. the second cup, there's no caffeine yeah. left in there. And it's like sometimes it's I put in too much half and half. And right. It's basically like just yeah. milky yeah. tea water. And I, I love it all because it's just warm and comforting. Yeah, and it's are, like my ritual. You, she is a beverage oriented. You've seen how many beverages I go we, through in a day. We, um, well, first of all, she told me that she puts four LaCroix in her purse before she goes out. I, when I go someplace. <laughs> That makes you well, sound not, really crazy. Not before I go out. <laughs> like, not when I'm, like, going to go out to dinner or something. But <laughs> if I'm going to be spending a long day... Okay, so if I was going to a rehearsal or something and uh-huh. I was going to be away from my house for several hours, yes, I would put three or four LaCroix in my purse. And you've told me you don't mind them uh, room temperature. I, I love room temperature drinks. I'm actually very attracted right. to room temperature okay. drinks. Guys, if you're regular, you know we did a whole more than mom about beverages. We also did a whole more than mom about what we put in our bags. So this is, like, yeah. very... Uh, crossover episodes right now <laughs> okay should we keep moving so yes. we kind of did both but you do another one because that was just yeah we okay. both answered that one so here's one that's like a little off the wall okay it's feeling very california okay very, very southern california okay would you rather be forced to get botox or be told you would never be allowed to try botox now this is an interesting question because you're probably not even thinking about botox yet no but but I know a lot of people who are and do. I think if I could control the quantity and the circumstances, yeah. I would rather be forced to do it. Because the, because the and I have no immediate plans, but right. the people I know who've done Botox have done, in some cases, very minimal. Yeah. And it, it hasn't been like a gateway procedure to like right. other amounts of crazy work. So I agree. Okay. Um, I actually used to have like a super knee jerk reaction about Botox, but then I saw it done last spring and it was interesting i have no desire to do it i don't have forehead wrinkles you have no i'm i almost dropped a swear word because it irritates me you have no forehead wrinkles i, I can make myself have them if i, I work know, really hard now so mine between are just permanent. between my eyes i'm getting like some fine lines just from like kind of scratching yeah. up my eyebrows together and i have seen that you can have it done on your eye like the stuff around like mm-hmm. your crow's feet it's supposed to help um but i don't feel any real need to have it no, done you have she's 41 almost this yeah. month guys and she has dewy teenage skin it's because i'm sweating right now but yeah. we are <laughs> we're, we're both we're dewy. both dewy um but i would also choose <clears throat> excuse me to be forced to have it because i would n- i never want any options to be removed for me ever yes. and the idea that i couldn't try something yeah. later just, just because make it would, would make me want it and yeah. it would drive me crazy and the other thing is this technology and everything changes so much that like i would think well yeah maybe i'm never gonna do it but who knows who maybe knows? it's gonna like even get less intimidating less right. invasive like i'd rather yeah i'd rather yeah so we're the same so this one. isn't an ad for botox or anything i make it through my entire life and never try right it. me too but like i just think it's an interesting question right and i've, I've just seen enough people do it in a very low-key way that yeah. as long as that was an option and i wasn't forced to like right go crazy yeah, yeah. okay all right um okay i have another parenting one okay this is special just for you okay thank like you it's particular to you would you rather take all of your kids to a parade by yourself on a hot day okay or read Dr. Seuss books aloud for an equivalent amount of time. So, you know, two or three hours, like a big sit down Dr. <sighs> Seuss fest. Sarah. I know, it's mean. <laughs> okay. If you don't know, Megan does not. Well, neither of us like parades. No, I think I'd have to do Dr. Seuss. Yeah, me too. But that's easy. I, they don't bother me. 
I don't like reading Dr. Seuss books. Uh, there's there's exceptions. Yeah. Maybe I could pick the ones I like. Yeah. Um, I like the there's Lorax. Not... And yeah. The story, ones. the yeah. story driven ones yeah. that rhyme, but there's a story. Yeah. I actually enjoy. They're okay. It's, it's the Fox and Socks and yeah. the Hop yeah. on Pop yeah. and like, yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, Cat in the Hat feels like one long tongue twister to me. Right. And it is really long. It's hard yeah. to say the words and my mouth gets tired. I love Yertle the then... Turtle. Do you have that one? It's Yertle, Yertle the, the turtle. turtle. And then there's two other ones um, in that. What about Horace? Here's a who. That's not Dr. Seuss. It's just that style. No, I think that is. Is that Dr. Seuss? Mm-hmm. I always actually liked that one. Yeah. So yeah, this doesn't sound, I mean, Dr. Seuss is not my preferred right. reading. Um, And that would be an epic session, but you could do it. You just yeah. grab a lukewarm LaCroix and go to town. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be okay. A hot parade with all of my kids. It's, I mean, it's something I've done. Yeah. You... I've done it multiple times, but I've really not enjoyed it. Yeah. Um. So, and now I just opt out of the parade right. entirely. Yeah. So we're big on opting out. Okay. Your turn. Okay. So here's one that's, I mean, now I have to swap in because I had my, one of my new. Yeah, used. that's fine. Um, This is going to sound a little weird. Okay. Okay. With your kids, the ages they are now, mm-hmm. would you rather have to sleep train them again? <laughs> Or potty train them again. <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> <laughs> but like, just put a twist on it. So it's their right. personalities right now. It's everything about them right now. What would, would you rather do? Oh, Because this changes my answer. The age the, thing changes my answer. Yeah. I mean, I think I'd rather sleep train them. I don't ever want to potty train again. So no matter not like, like a 10-year-old. Yeah, not a 10-year-old and an 8-year-old. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But like for me, part of the ease of of sleep training my I never really got too worried about sleep training was yeah. that my kids slept with me yeah and now I cannot have five adult children like piling into my bed <laughs> I would basically have I'd be forced right. to potty train them right so that was kind of a dumb one but I like it though <laughs> Sarah our sponsor Haya is back on the show today and I just really love this company Typical children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with two teaspoons of sugar, unhealthy chemicals, and other gummy junk most parents don't really want their growing kids eating. That's why Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin, was created. That's right, Megan. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern kids' diets to provide the full-body nourishment they need. And Haya vitamins have a yummy taste kids love, too. So we were just talking to Katie on our team, Megan, and she was saying that when they get down toward the bottom of the high of vitamin bottle, her boys are fighting over who gets the last one. Oh, I love it. And I also love that Katie can feel good about that, right? Haya is designed for kids of all ages and sent straight to your door. So parents never need to worry about running out. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. You're going to get 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash mom hour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Whoa, sweet man cave. Thanks. Serious upgrade. How'd you pay for all this? I got a home equity line of credit from Figure. I was approved in five minutes and had funding in five days. Wow, that fast and easy? Yep, the application is 100% online, plus no out-of-pocket costs, just fast access to the cash you need. How do I get started? Go to figure.com and get that serious upgrade. Figure Lending LLC, DBA Figure, Equal Opportunity Lender, NMLS 1717824. Terms and conditions apply. Visit figure.com for more information. For licensing information, go to www.nmlsconsumeraccess.org. Oh, I have a good, another good one for you. Okay. Looks like I left off in the middle of a sentence on one of them. We're really winging it today. Um, okay. <laughs> Would you rather go for one month without any Wi-Fi phone or any virtual connectivity? Like none. Okay. So you don't have the internet on your phone. You don't have Facebook on your phone. You don't have email. You don't have your computer. Nothing for a okay. month. For a month. Or shave your head. <laughs> well... Wait a second. I'm trying to think about this. So the options are give up my internet or shave my head. Oh, I'd give up my internet. For really? Sure. I mean, First of all, I'm growing my hair out. I know. But it's hard to have of course. nothing. Like you but don't, don't ha- you also feel like it would be one of those things that like you could feel good about? Yeah. I mean, it's a very romantic idea of the detox, but a month is a long time. And I'm not saying like you get to go to a beautiful cabin in the woods and like do you yoga. You just have to go about your regular life. You have life. to go about your regular and life. And see everybody else on their technology. Yep. Yeah. I mean, that's hard, but I'm still for two reasons. I'm still going to go with that. Okay. One, I think I'm on my phone too much. And I think it would be one of those things that would be really hard, but like, sure. I kind of force myself to yeah. buckle down and maybe at the end I'd actually, 
I could write about. I could write a best-selling book about my month-long detox, um, tech detox. And number two, you know how long it took me to grow my hair this I long? Know. It I took know. me like three years. Okay. So no there's way would I no, shave my head right no now. No, I'm going all the way. I'm all going right. the distance. All right. So how about you? Would you also? Um, yeah, I wouldn't like either one though. I mean, that's right. kind of like a, not a fun one to choose, but yeah, I mean, I would give up the internet. I don't want to shave my head. You know, <laughs> I don't, or but even like pixie cut it. No, exactly. I do need a haircut, but not to not that, that level. Badly. Um, I have no more. I'm out. Okay. We went through these really fast. Do well, you, you guys, nope. Okay. I have, it's a, it says, would you rather travel to Europe or get, Oh, and I don't know what I was going to say. So that's like a blank. happy one. I know it was, it was going to be, but like still a hard choice. Like, Ooh, but I, I lost track. I'm just going to say travel to Europe. I don't even care what the other thing was. Okay. Oh, I do have one more. See, I, oh, okay. I did a lot. Okay. Would you rather perform your dream role in a musical Ooh. or have a lifetime supply of free clothes from your dream retailer? I couldn't think of who that would be for you. Like, like just your favorite clothes to wear for life. I would still go. So I am actually playing my dream role in a musical. I know. I just Tell got everybody cast as Roxy Hart in a local production of Chicago, woo woo. which I have literally wanted. I mean, I've always loved that show. But then when they did the movie in what was that? 2002. Yeah. Uh, no, not quite. 2000 or 2001. Okay. I think but yeah. when that movie came out and I saw it, I was like, I need to play Roxy. And I, Never had the opportunity. Apparently, it's a really hard show to get the rights to. Oh, interesting. Um, and there's never been an opportunity. And then it came up. And I remember also thinking at one point, like, I'm going to be too old by the time this comes around. So I've done a lot of shows over the last couple of years. And I tend to kind of fall now into playing a lot of mom roles, which is great. I, I've played some really good parts. Yeah. Um, but the idea of kind of doing this, like, sexy, fun, like song and dancey yes. number kind of thing. I kind of felt like I'd passed that. Like yeah. I didn't really feel like that opportunity would come back my way because I am kind of just settling into a different kind of role, which is great. Um, but this is like the perfect, it's the perfect combination. I love the music. I love the show. The cast is going to be great. So I'm really excited about that. And honestly, it will represent three months of my life and then it'll be over forever. That's the thing about doing theater. Yeah. You work your butt off for three months or two months or however long. And then you, for your show and the run and then it's over and you never do it again. You never do that experience again. Right. But that's what makes it so special. Yeah. So I think um, as much as I would love to have clothes for the rest of my life, I can just buy clothes. Yeah. I love it. I think I knew that's what you'd say. But well, what would I you say? To... I know you don't act. Well, but like... I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. if there's... You don't have fantasies about acting? Not really. No. No. Okay. Singing. I would like to come back in my next life and just belt it out. So yeah. like a lounge singer? Mm, I don't know. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. It's never yeah, too I don't late. have an equivalent for that. Okay, well, we should probably wrap up, but this was super fun. And you guys can just tell us your would you rathers. You can also pose a would you rather. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. So I think the most, the, the way people are hitting us up lately is Instagram. Seems yeah. like that's where you are. If you're, if you're on Instagram and not following the mom hour, it's definitely, I think where our comments are really engaging, yeah, I agree. but we're also on Facebook and you can also email us hello at the mom com, And you can also leave a comment um, on the show notes for this episode, which are at the mom com. Just look for this episode and then leave us a comment. And we're getting great comments there too so lots of ways to stay in touch yeah and um yeah check back with us on tuesday we're gonna have a great episode looking fun. forward to this bye guys bye. hey everyone we have a favor to ask if you are an apple podcasts user can you check really quickly to make sure you're still following the mom hour Apple did one of their big software updates recently, and it changed a bunch of things about how you get the podcasts you're subscribed to. If Apple Podcasts is your podcast app of choice, all you have to do is find your way to our show page and then click the little plus sign or follow in the top right corner. Thanks so much. Sarah, I started a Substack last spring just kind of as an experiment, and it turns out I love it. I'm treating it kind of like an old school blog, writing about things that are happening in my life. Megan, I've loved following your stuff on Substack, and I actually just really like Substack in general. You know, we've both been a lot less active on Instagram lately, and I'm finding that Substack scratches that itch to connect and create without all the busyness of a typical social media feed. So I would love it if Mom Hour listeners wanted to look me up there. I'm at meganfrancis.substack.com, and that's Megan with two A's. M-E-A-G-A-N-Francis.substack.com.